Welcome back to another edition of All Chiefed Up, where we do Kansas City Chiefs news, analysis, and more. Today, we're going over the top five keys to beat Baby Carr and the Raiders on Monday Night Football. It's Raider Week, baby. Everybody's pumped. We want to know how we're going to beat this terrible Raiders team. We can't have another Colt stinker. Dude, we cannot have that letdown game, especially against the Raiders. This is what we circle on our calendars when the season drops. This is who we want to beat. I just said off the camera, I, I enjoy beating nobody as bad as I do the Raiders, except for maybe the Broncos. Yeah, but the Raiders are just an extra special win because they're like, they're so petty. Remember they were doing laps around the stadium when they actually beat us once in six years and things like that. So, I mean, it's just too funny. They're such a dumpster fire. It's just, we, we might as well add to it, man. So let's just go ahead and jump into the five keys. Uh, we'll start with number one. Mike, what do you got? Number one key today, we're going to look at the secondary matchups. Now, that's a little different than what we usually start off with, but I think this is important. They went out and traded for Devonta Adams. Um, Hunter Renfro's coming off a little bit of a concussion problem he had. He was questionable at practice today. He ran a little bit without pads. Um, he could be playing. He probably will play. So I think it's a big week for Watson to step up, the rookie. Um, it's going to be a big week for whoever draws Darren Waller uh, in that tight end game. Is it going to be Justin Reed? Maybe we – let Cook do it. We drafted Brian Cook knowing he can cover and he's physical and he's big and he's fast. Maybe this is his week to shine. What do you think? Uh, that's quite possible. Uh, Darren Waller doesn't scare me as much as Hunter Renfro does because you have Devontae Adams who's going to get a lot of the attention. Everyone knows how great of a receiver he is. He also has a pass connection with Carr. So, I mean, they got some chemistry already. But you got to watch out for Hunter Renfro, man. He's one of the most underrated route runners in an entire football league. Uh, and there'll be DVs out there that tell you that same thing. Uh, I've heard it time and time again. And if we ignore him in the slot there and let him eat us alive, that could be a problem. Uh, so we definitely want to uh, make sure these coverages are tight on these guys. That way we have time to get to Carr. Right. And there's been rumblings this week that Derek Carr is purposely not throwing the ball to Devontae Adams. I guarantee you he tries to force it to him all day long just to prove a point and um yeah Devonte adams is good whoever draws him which is probably gonna be fenton it may be sneed but i kind of think sneed will work the slot a little bit now that trent mcduffie's not well, back with that hamstring yet i have a theory what if we put jalen watson on Devonte adams so they think they have that rookie mismatch and we can just keep throwing at him and throwing at him and throwing at him but how about jalen watson get out there and make him more of a name for himself and shut down Devonte adams that would be excellent to see Dude, Jalen Watson is a big boy, and he, he's up to the task, I believe. Um, If you kind of, you know, don't let him get beat on the back end because that's his one knock is his speed a little bit. Kind of let a safety shield him and protect him a little bit on the back end. Yeah, so I think that's a really good idea, man. I actually got a stat here on Jalen Watson that's kind of cool. It says Jalen Watson has allowed a reception percentage of only 47.4%. Other respectable corners with a higher reception percentage than Watson, Denzel Ward, Jalen Ramsey, Charvarius Ward, and Xavier Howard. That is good company. So I'm telling you, man, Jalen Watson could be up to the challenge, and I like the idea, Steve. Yeah, I'm not saying leave him out to dry. I mean, if Devontae's out there wrecking him, don't don't just let it happen because Devontae is the best receiver in the league when you really boil it down. So, I mean, like I said – don't let him get beat to death, but if he's up to the challenge and it's working, stick with it. So, yeah, we got a banger coming up in a few minutes at the last key. Stick around for that one. But first, we're going to get to key number two, and that is make the Raiders one-dimensional. And by that, we mean let's stop the run. I don't know if Josh Jacobs is going to play. He's coming off a little bit of an injury. Um, They do got Samir White, the rookie out of Georgia. They like him a lot. He's fast. He's physical. But I think our defense is up for the task. Our defensive line and our defense as a whole has looked really good against the run this year. We, we brought up that stat against Tampa Bay the other day. So, yeah, we need to make them one-dimensional. Put it in Derek Carr's hands. Let baby Carr see if he can beat us because something tells me he, he can't do it. He hasn't done it in years. So here's my thing about it. If we shut that run down, which we should be able to do, our run defense has looked excellent this year. I don't see any reason why it would change this week. So if we shut that run down and we know he's passing, these pass rushers can pin their ears back and try to get back there to Derek Carr. And everyone knows if you hit Derek Carr, the tears start rolling and he starts screwing up everything. Uh, he'll throw picks, uh, sack fumbles, you name it. Derek Carr doesn't play great under pressure. So I think if we stop that run game completely and make it to where they know it's just running into a brick wall, 
We have to throw the ball. That allows Carl Loftus, uh, Frank Clark, even Chris Jones, uh, Carlos Dunlap, get back there and get to him and hit him. Dude, this is the week George Carl Loftus breaks a quarterback in half. I'm calling it. George Carl Loftus will probably behead Derek Carr. If that's man, it's, possible, it's going to come man. Uh, Carl Optus has looked great. You have a lot of, uh, people talking like talking heads and stuff out there. They're actually talking about George Carl Optus being the guy that they thought he was going to be when they didn't want to draft him. Like, Oh, he can't get to the quarterback. He's just serviceable. Um, uh, I think you're wrong. I think you need to give the guy some time and it's going to happen, man. Cause Carl Optus, he's, he's a workhorse and, and he's good and he's strong. It's going to happen. Dude, speaking of people down on Carl Loftus, we have some chief content creators within our own field of YouTube. I won't say the names, but they're talking about how George Carl Loftus has proved that he's solid, but he's not a game changer. Right. He's not good. And we probably wasted our first round pick. They were doing this all the way back, you know, in draft season. They were doing it, saying this about Carl Loftus. Here it all chiefed up. We said Carl Loftus is a playmaker. He should have been a top 15 pick at minimum. And he's going to be a beast, and he's young, and he has a high motor. Let this kid eat. He's going to be the big dog. He's four games into his career. Uh, I think you might want to hold your horses yeah. a little bit on all the bull crap. So Pump, pump the yeah. brakes, baby. We are pump pro George Karloftis. All right, guys, make sure you stick around to the end because our last key is a killer. It's definitely going to make or break the game probably, so you want to hear that one. Also, thanks for liking, subscribing, hitting that bell. Mike, let's go ahead and get into the third key. Okay, so this one goes off the last one. If you make Derek Carr try to beat us, make him one-dimensional, let's win the turnover battle. I know that that is a very easy key. That could be for every single game. I get it, but if you put it in the hands of baby Carr, he will make mistakes, and we need to capitalize on those mistakes. Yeah, like I was just saying, if you put it in his hands and you put pressure on him, he likes to collapse. He folds under pressure. He always does. It's been proven year after year after year. So why why change it? Let's let's make the same thing happen. Use the same recipe. Get the same result. Dude, I named my lawn chair in the backyard Derek Carr because it collapses perfectly. <laughs> Every time I sit on it, give it a little pressure. Okay, and that's going to take us to the next key, key number four. Let's move to the offense a little bit. How about we build off of what we started in Tampa Bay when it comes to our offense? Let's keep this offense progressing. Let's see more power run game. Let's see more of the screen game. I love the fact that Andy Reid started to get our rookies involved. He got Pacheco yes. some carries. Pacheco runs nasty. I love him. He tried to get Sky more involved. Let's continue to integrate these guys into the offense, and let's build on what we got. Let's build on it, man. Let's get MVS and Juju back going. We looked yeah. good. I'm right there with you, man. 100%. Got to keep the same strategy going on offense. Use that power run game, man. The offensive line's built for it. We've talked about it. Uh, Pacheco and CEH were both running hard. They look good. One thing I would like to see this week, I'd like to see Pacheco maybe get involved in the passing game because we saw in the offseason, he's a great pass catcher. He made some great catches during camp, uh, and everyone's seen it. So let's see if we can get him involved in the pass game, get him out in the open a little bit, let him make some plays. And then also, I want to see Sky Moore a little bit more involved than he was. I was I was glad to see him get more snaps than usual last week. But you also saw what he can do when the ball is in his hands. So maybe use him in the screen game. Maybe hit him on some short routes and just see if he can create. Something I noticed going back and rewatching the Tampa Bay game. I like Jet McKinnon. We're big fans of McKinnon. We thought he played himself onto this roster. We were calling for us to re-sign him all the way back in March. We thought he sh he he earned himself onto this team. Um, but I did notice. The Chiefs try to get him involved, but I don't feel like they know where to use Jet so much. Um, I noticed they were using him a lot on third and short situations, in, in obvious situations where Pacheco would have been better, like to just yeah. go tear it up, not a yep. finesse back. And then I noticed they were using him in the, in the screen game a lot. I like that to a certain degree, but we need to get Pacheco doing that. I feel like Pacheco needs to start beating out McKinnon on a lot more plays. And I hate to say that because I like McKinnon, but if Pacheco can start stealing more plays from McKinnon and getting more involved and in making him and Clyde the one-two punch, I do believe this offense starts looking a lot better. Yeah, I mean, I like Jarrett McKinnon as well, but I think Jarrett McKinnon is going to shine in a backup role. Like, if you have to rely on Jarrett McKinnon, he's going to come in and he's going to produce for you. But when you're trying to switch out three backs the entire game, we've talked about this before, it's too much rotation. No one gets in a rhythm, nothing like that. If you want to use the two-headed monster, go for it. Let's do that. Let's stick with it. Pacheco, CH, back and forth, whatever they're best at. And then use McKinnon when we have to. But yeah, um, McKinnon's just not going to be a feature back. So I'm, I'm good with him not getting as many snaps. Yeah, I'm right there with you. 
Okay, man, so let's jump on to key number five. This is the most important key. This is the banger we've been alluding to. Ever since the offseason, Chiefs Kingdom has been divided down the middle on none other than a fellow named Orlando Brown Jr. Should we pay him? Is he overrated? Is Veach going to give him money? Should we cut him? Should we trade him? Dude, we fought back and forth all offseason. Even to, to this week, we're in week number five. We flip-flop back and forth. He's He looks bad. He looks good. He looks bad. PFF says he looks great. The fans don't like him. It's a disaster. But this is the week. This is the week that our offensive tackles must go up against two of the best pass rushers in the game, Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. So this is the week, Orlando Brown. Put up or shut up. And if he dominates this week, Chiefs Kingdom needs to chill out and get off his back. Yeah, like you said, everyone's nitpicking everything he does. Uh, Even this last week, they talked about how bad he played. If you really just watch the games, Orlando Brown does what he has to do and gets the job done. But if you go to Pro Football Focus and look up a bunch of stats, it might say that he's not very good. He's one of the worst in the league. But, I mean, the proof is in the outcome. I mean, we had a great run game. We we looked good in the pass game last week. Uh, There wasn't a ton of pressure on Mahomes, even though we're playing against Shaq Barrett. Um, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I think people are looking too much into it, but you're right, Mike, this week is the week to find out what he's really made of, because I personally think Max Crosby is one of the best pass rushers in the league might be my favorite one, to be honest. I hate the Raiders, but I would take Max Crosby in a heartbeat. If I could, I think he's a great player. I like the way he plays. He plays with intensity and he's not going to let up on Orlando Brown if he's on his side. So you're going to see what he's made of. Well, that's one of the reasons I like George Karloftis. I actually thought he was a baby Max Crosby. Um, Max Crosby's got a lot more moves. He's more polished. A I speedier. get it. He's yeah. a little speedier. He's all the above, but still, he's kind of got that body type and he's got that drive and that, like that motor, but that's what I like about him. And yeah, this is the week that we got to put up or shut up with Orlando Brown. If he does well, and then next week, it don't get any easier. He's going to go up against Von Miller next week. It don't get right. any easier. Like you're playing against everybody's number one every week. I he's been good. I hate how these people are picking you know, one week PFF says Orlando Brown played an excellent game. We all selectively ignore PFF that week. And then the week PFF says, oh, he looked pretty bad. We're like, oh, PFF says he looks horrible. And it's like, right. come on, you can't play both sides of the fence here. How about we just support the kid? Patrick Mahomes believes in him. If Patrick Mahomes wants and believes in him, I trust Patrick Mahomes. I trust my QB over my judgment. I don't see everything that that uh, Orlando Brown does off the field. I don't see everything he does on the field. I don't see what he does in practice, in the weight room, in the film room. So if they they believe in Orlando Brown, I believe in him, and it's time that we start supporting the dude. And just because he asked for a little bit of money, I'm sorry, guys, this is a business. You guys were all over Tyreek Hill when he wanted to ask for $400 billion. Hey, it's a business. Orlando's doing the same thing, man. Let him get paid. Yeah, some of you guys need to chill out and realize that Orlando Brown's only got around 20 games under his belt as a left tackle. And that's insane. And if you look back at who he had to go against, he goes against the best of the best of the best all the time. Even if you're just looking at this year, he's already had to deal with the likes of Shaq Barrett, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack. It keeps going. He's looking at Max Crosby this week. Uh, Going to be a hard, tough matchup with Von Miller next week because Von Miller's fast. And that's what he struggles with. But he's still learning the position, so give him time. I understand that we didn't want to pay him a boatload of money, and he's not proved himself yet. I can understand that perspective. And yeah, are we glad that Veach didn't do it right now? Yeah, it might have been a smart move to wait and see. But it could also backfire, which we've talked about. But to get, give this kid time. Let's see if he can adjust. And uh, I'd say by the end of this year, uh, you might be surprised at what he's looking like over there on the left side. Yeah, I totally agree. I think we just need to chill, pump the brakes on Orlando Brown. Let's watch what he does this week. Let's just see. I I just want to see what he does this week. Let's see if he can beat Max Crosby. Okay, guys, this is the fun time of the show that we always look forward to. This is Game Predictions for Raider Week. So, Steve, what do you got, baby? All right. I normally don't like to do this. I'm definitely not in a divisional matchup with a rivalry because it can be scrappy games. They can be close games even when they're kind of lopsided. But I'm going to go ahead and go with the blowout on this one, man. I'm going to be optimistic and say that the Chiefs go ahead and blow this one open and win it 45 to 10. Uh, Defense just completely shut these guys down. I don't even want to give them any garbage time points. I just don't want it to happen. This is where I'm at with it. I want the blowout. I want Patrick Mahomes, the MVP, five touchdowns, 350 yards. 
the respect for the Raiders out the window, baby, with Steve. He ain't even ha- – that's savage. Did hey, you say 45 to 10? 45 to 10, baby. It's happening. Let's watch it happen. Dude, I On Monday Night does. Football in front of the world, baby. Okay. Well, I'm not too far off of you, to be honest. I'm going to go Chiefs 37 to 21. And I think it's going to be a blowout as well. I don't know if I go 45-10, but come on. Let's go. I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes as the MVP. I say he's going to get to 325 yards passing. He's going to have four touchdowns on the day. I also read a little stat that said Mahomes hits four touchdowns. He ties or passes Troy Aikman's all-time career touchdown pass record. And Troy Aikman's calling the game Monday night. How great would that be? Isn't it amazing how all these fools refuse to put Patrick Mahomes at the top of the league as the best quarterback, yet he's broken every record. He's already catching these notoriously great quarterbacks and stat-wise, and he's been around for what? Is this his sixth season, I Uh, think? Yeah, but he's only played five. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just unreal that people just refuse to look at it. But, hey, I like where we're going with this. We were pretty close on what we think Patty's going to do this week. I said five tutties and 350 yards. You said 325-four touchdowns. I got a little bit more of a blowout score than you. I just really i am expecting to see something good from the defense this week because, like I said, and you said as well, if we shut down that run game and we can tee off on car, it could be a big week for them. We might even see a defensive touchdown or two. Hey, we're back at home this week. The game's at Arrowhead. So I think we come out on Monday night, we're fired up. I think we go out there and give them the business, man, because the last thing we need is another little letdown game that we had against the Colts. We don't want to do that in front of our home fans. We need to keep building on what we did. Um, listening to Kelsey and everybody post game and how they took that game so seriously and, th- and they took that as a personal challenge. I just think they'll keep that up, man. And the ball's going to keep rolling. We're going to get the snowball effect here and we're going to get to see over the next few weeks the full force of the Kansas City Chiefs. Absolutely. We want all the momentum rolling our way when we have to go play Buffalo. So that's that's the way I see it. Let's have a big week this week against the Raiders and just roll that on into the following week and knock out Buffalo as well. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Make sure to get down in the comments and let us know if you agree with the keys to the victory or if you have some other ones in mind, we'll talk about it. If you're liking the content, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber yet or if you're new here, hit that subscribe button right now. We're trying to get to 5,000 before the season ends. We've got a long way to go. We need some help. Hit that share button. Share our videos on your social media with your friends and family and other Chiefs fans. Hit the bell. You get notifications when we come out with new content. And then also any super thanks over $4.99. And we're going to send you out some stickers and a keychain. Mike, anything left for Chiefs Kingdom today? Let's blow Derek Carr up. I want to see Coach Carr Loftus rip this dude in half. I want to see a tear stroll down his cheek very slowly because he just got beat so bad. I want to see this be such a blowout. That in the first time in history, Monday Night Football switches over to 60 minutes. I want it to be so bad that even David Carr decides that Derek Carr is not an elite quarterback. I want it to be so bad that ESPN finally is forced to cover the Chiefs in a positive light. I want it to be so bad they changed the spelling of the name from the Las Vegas Raiders to the LOSS Vegas Raiders. That would be great, actually. Um, Side note before we go. I watched six hours of ESPN, ESPN2, and NFL Network coverage today. Can you believe how much time they spend on the Chiefs in this juggernaut offense? An hour. Zero minutes. Nine. Zero minutes. I seen Mahomes one time. It was a commercial for Monday Night Football. That's disrespectful. Y'all going to pay attention to this team. Disrespect. We're going to beat the Raiders. We'll see you guys. Cause I'm for my soul.